Welcome back. We got confirmation that Yui Mamiya was an accomplice to the whole groping situation. And the question now on everyone's mind is, who is pulling RK's strings? Who's behind all of this? Why did Sawa Sensei have to die? Let's try to get a little bit closer to the truth. Hope you guys enjoy. All right, so we finished chapter nine. Finally, let's move on to chapter 10. And we just learned some crazy stuff about uh, Kuwana here. He's a little bit messed up in the head, I think. Thirteen years in the past. Mitsuru Kusimoto plunged himself into a coma, sealing his fate alongside Kuwana's. Ridden by guilt, Kuwana sets off on a path of vengeance, and the bullies he drags with him are shackled to the shadows. However, Yokosawa's murder serves as a deadly wake-up call to what he's done. Chapter 10, Catch a Tiger. Hey, what are you doing? Getting your identification on record, so you won't be a threat to us anymore? Uh, what? And I think you owe us after everything you've done. Expect me to come collect one of these days. <sighs> your carriage awaits, Mamiya-san. Go and tell me we're going back to that dingy arcade. <laughs> we sure are. But try not to hold a grudge. It wasn't us who abandoned you. <gasps> Higashi, you already called Sari-san in the gang, right? You know... It does look pretty bad in here. Like, when was the last time they mopped the floors or cleaned the walls? Or are those blood stains from like all the fights we've had in here? They just won't come up. Yeah, I let them know what's up. They said they'll head over when they're ready. Did Shirasaki Sensei say anything? <laughs> well, she was pretty stunned when I told her who Kuwana really is and what he's up to. Sounding a little smug there, Higashi san. Taking credit for the detective work you didn't even do? Back me up here, Yagami san. <sighs> Whatever, man. Kuana got away, and that's all that matters. Still, the task in front of us is finishing Sari-san's case. We have to clear up Ahara's crime once and for all. With Mamiya-san's help, of course. <sighs> Finally, I'm ready to get some answers. Well, we still got time till Shirosaki-sensei gets here. Why don't you take a breather, Yagami-san? Huh? That'd be okay? Sure. I'll call you once everyone's here. Yeah, a break sounds good. By the way, Higashi, has anything unusual gone down in Kamracho Show lately? Anything involving RK? Yeah, about that. My guys are saying things have been a little too quiet since yesterday. Soma and Akutsu are out in Ijincho too. When they come back, they're in for a rude awakening. They'll make them pay for what they did to Kaito Aniki. Make them pay? Aren't your Yakuza days behind you now? That's not the Yakuza in me talking. That's just a problem I'm gonna be the solution for. Uh, isn't that exactly what a Yakuza would say? Fine. Think of it as getting revenge for a brother. Uh... I'm doing the right thing, damn it! <laughs> yeah, maybe it's just how you're putting it. Besides, what's the matter if I was Yakuza? 
I've got my own code, and I'm gonna do right by me. Whatever you say. Much as things change, they stay the same. Since I'm out, might as well check on how the city's doing. I'll go kill some time somewhere. Okay. Well, hope you guys enjoyed that main story. Now time to get back to the side stuff. <laughs> you guys thought we were done with it. All right, so what is... Where are we? We're in... Okay, so there's a, a sub story that's opened up. I would love to get the... Uh, advice of anybody who can recall which sub stories are worth doing on stream and which one's not. But we'll probably just do all of them. I don't know. Uh, but we have... Oh, hold on. Hey, Yagami-san. It's Sugiura. Hey. Shirosaki-sensei and the others just got to Charles. They're getting ready to grill Mamiya-san. Got it. Then I'll head back soon. Thanks. Why did I even leave? As soon as I get back to, back to Charles, Yui Mami is going to answer every single one of my questions. All right, let's check out. Speaking of sub stories, let's see what this one is. Uh, this is it, right? That detective's office. Yeah, he took some pics of my manager while he was out with his mistress, and this guy blackmailed him over it. Ooh, did he threaten to post him on social media? That'll pull your career in the gutter real quick. Blackmail? Me? I've never done that. Excuse me. Sorry, did you have some business with my agency? What? White tee? Black leather jacket? Tight jeans? He even has the crispy do and the chain wallet. This is... Um... We're sorry! Is this another, um... Uh, uh, uh... Impersonation deal? The hell was that about? Hey. Hey, that jacket. Yeah. It's that Yagami guy from Chatter, dresses like a thug, just like his bio says. What's going on? Sounds like some bad rumors about me are getting around. What's been going on since I've been out of town? She mentioned Chatter. Time for some buzz research. Got a keyword Yagami. Oh boy, we should probably investigate this, right? What do you think? Yakuza Zero is picking up. You just found out who the man with the bat tattoo is and you're freaking out. Oh, Clay, it's getting so good. It's getting to the really juicy parts. Let's search Yagami. Pretty... Pretty shook got th threatened. With pics of me sugar babying it up. Some cor corrupt detective sold me a doctored photo. I can't use this. More like a fraud than a legit businessman to me. Yagami, if you're reading this, you're so full of shit. Got scammed by some asshole named Yagami. I asked this fraudster to do a job five times. Still no results. Oh my god, there's so many... There's so many posts. Yagami just ran off. Saw him with my own two eyes. I swear I just saw Yagami. Scared the hell out of me. Just some bit ago intimidating guy. That dickhead Yagami's causing problems all over town. Paid a guy to look into an affair. Never heard from the fraud again. Screwed my buddy over. Extortion. Cops asking about him. What the hell? I'm a fraud? What the hell? Still don't know where this is coming from. Maybe I should narrow down my search. Fraud. Oh, here we go. Uh, what about threaten? Whoa, this imposter's done this much damage already? Looks like the majority of it's from the past few days. Seriously, what's happening here? But I can't figure out the rumors. 
where the r rumors originated what about other keywords threaten blackmailing and shakedowns i had no idea about any of this okay what about saw here we go just saw him all right he's over at the champion district the police really hope that's just a rumor not sure if i'll find any leads but i should scope out the champion district anyways is clay learning the uh learning the streets of kamurocho personally i played so many of these games and i still get lost in kamurocho Okay, so let me just really pay attention to what people are saying. Oh. How come... How come when I came here before, nothing popped up? Yagami, get out of here! Huh? Damn, that is a swing! What the hell is... Don't you worry, Taro. Grandpa's gonna beat Yagami to a pulp. What? But, but, Yagami's scary. Don't cry, Taro. Grandpa promises Yagami's ass is grass. That old man's after me? What the hell is going on in this town? Hmm. I'm getting a real bad feeling about this. Let me meet this Yagami guy. Let me at him. Something tells me I'm done for if I don't handle this just right. Better check this out. If people have been badmouthing you all me all over town, then this probably has something to do with it. I should see what his deal is. Excuse me. <clears throat> is that Oh, so you're Yagami, the no-good scumbag who robbed my adorable grandchild. No, this is all a big... 500 yen yesterday, and today you hit him up for 50,000? How could you be so low? Wait, why does a kid have 50,000 yen? So, Grandpa's been itching to beat up whoever shook his kid down. Better nip this in the bud. Now hold on. It's true, I'm Yagami, but I've never shaken anyone down. Why can't you up? Absurd! Don't waste your breath. I'm kicking your ass from here to Sunday. Oh my god. Grandpa! Why Yagami? <sighs> Damn it! <laughs> I better get going. <laughs> He's like, you know what? I'm, all, I'm gone. Two arms. Hmm. What? Huh? What the? The same old man? Are they twins or something? What? What? Where's this Yagami? I'll slice him to bits. Wait till he get a taste of an eighth, da, eighth Don's blade. Ugh. Oh, that's worse. Yagami, show yourself. How could you do this to my grandchild? I'll carve you up right. What is going on? Are you serious? Oh, come on. Now a broadsword? Wait, holy shit. Are they triplets? Seriously? This is getting bad. They've got me penned in. Anyway, can distract these worked up grandpas? What? Uh So um <laughs> Okay, well I can sneak past this one maybe. No? 
What do you want me to do, game? I can't go back in the alley. I can't go... He said distract him? What does Yagami have available? Oh, disguise? Oh, wait. I can go into a disguise anytime? Well, not anytime, but I guess I can now. Let's be a pilot. I... I was under the impression that I could only do a disguise if the game prompted me to. I don't know. I guess this is this. The game is prompting me to do it. So just wasn't thinking about that. OK, this get up ought to trick the old timers. Yagami, where are you? I'll have your head. Wow, I guess grandpas go berserker mode for their grandkids or something. We already did the the vampire costume. That was a really quick thing anyways. We're already out of costume. Phew, got out of that somehow. Still though, what the hell? Chatter's nothing but useless rumors. Guess I'll start hitting up my own ha old haunts for any leads. First stop, tender. Uh oh, police? Yes, the number of reports we've taken on him have gotten a lot worse in the past few days. We need to speak to him in person. Hmm. Even so, I don't know where he is. Is that so? Well, if you see him, will you reach out to us? Okay. Sure, you'll be my first call. Guess the rumors about the police being after me were true after all. This sure is a bad day. Let's see what Masuda has to say. He'd never snitch on me to the cops. You wouldn't snitch, right? Masuda. Mm -hmm. Doc! Are you okay? The cops were just here. Something about you being a crooked detective? I don't know where this nonsense came from either. When I got back to Kamurocho, my rep was already tanked by somebody. Hey. You know anything about this? Even just a rumor. I've been hearing that this detective with your name has been blackmailing cheaters with wiretaps and pictures. Here he's even shaking down kids, making hostesses miserable at the bar. Yeah. I had no idea about any of this. Then that can only mean an imposter's on the loose. Speaking of on the loose, there's Jesse and Doc. Hello, you guys are just in time for the stream <laughs> welcome huh an imposter of me but what could somebody get out of pretending to be some regular detective hmm no clue but he sure wants people to know he's you whenever he finishes raising hell for someone he throws a bunch of your cards around like this one he's got my business cards this card looks like the real thing if he's throwing them around like confetti my guess is he has a ton of them mm-hmm yeah, where could an imposter get so many of your business cards? Either he made his own copies, or he stole them out of the office. From your office? You lock up when you leave, right? Uh... Yeah, well that doesn't stop criminals. Um, I don't think I can remember the last time I locked up. Don't you ever get sick of unlocking and locking the doors all the time? Uh, <laughs> Yagami! Oh... Sheesh, talk about careless. Did you forget this is Kamurocho? I'll be careful from now on. Anyway, if the imposter did sneak into my office, he might have left some sort of trace. I'm gonna head to the office now, Masada. See you around. Mm -hmm. Oh, all right. Watch your back out there. What in the... This place is a sty. Was someone partying here while I was gone? Oh my god, this is your fault, Yagami. You left the door unlocked. Seriously? Yes, the phony Yagami really made himself at home. Okay, bold. What is that? Tortellini? What is that plate of? Is it like tortellini? But also stupid. There's gotta be some evidence of who I'm dealing with here somewhere in this mess. He didn't even... 
It's like a full plate of food. Nah. Oh hell, hot pot. Oh, hot pot. Right on the desk. That's gonna leave a mark. Actually, that pot's pretty big. Full of chili shrimp, looks like. Did my phony actually host people here? Hmm? Well, maybe he invited a bunch of people, but it doesn't look like anybody showed up. Hmm, this shrimp's barely been touched. Maybe something came up in the middle of dinner, like another client to handle. Yeah, it's shrimp. It's still warm. That means they were just here. Oh my god, Yagami. What the? What have you done? This place reeks of booze. They must have really been living it up here. No way. Sheesh, it's almost like a tank rolled through here, not a party. This makes me so angry. Nah. Oh hell, hot pot. Oh, that's part mm -hmm. of the hot pot. Suspicious. <sighs> Potato chip bag. Come on, put your trash where it belongs. Hmm. Okay, the best clue is the pot of chili shrimp. It's still warm, so I doubt my imposter's been gone long. They also barely touched it for some reason. Which could be that he saw me coming? That explain why he left his this food here. That would mean he hasn't gotten far either. Ugh. Nah. Man, this stuff almost reeks. I doubt anyone could be around this for long without smelling like garlic and chilies. So, next steps. Wait Call the minute. doggo! Wait, could I track him by scent? Call the doggo! Doggo time, doggo time, Don't detective, drink. detective, doggo Who's time. He really you, did buddy. not bother to lock the door to his office, King Frost. <sighs> Correct. You're telling me you know where our B and E chef went? B and E? Yeah, I imagine so. Considering the amount of garlic he must have used, if we track the smell of this food, we might end up hunting down our guy. All right, it's your time to shine, buddy. Go, Rampo! Oh, breaking and entering B and E? Huh? This way, huh? Got something? Doing great. Oh, goodness. I've been just wiped out today. I'm so tired. Oh my god. It's just like the fake Kiryu. They're so not fit. Why is it always some like. I don't know, slovenly person. Is this the same guy who... It looks like the guy who impersonated Kiryu. I wonder if it's the same guy. Hand over your cash. Please, no. You. You want me sharing these pictures of you cheating with the world? Huh, Mr. Big Shot Company Manager? No, anything but that. I have a wife. I have a child. Should have thought of that before you cheated. That's on you. Just think of it as a 500,000 yen learning fee. I couldn't. I can't afford that. You better listen real good, pal. I'm Takoyuki Yagami. I'm Takoyuki Yagami. Hey. Huh? What? You're Takoyuki Yagami. Huh? Uh, now wait. Of all the people, your Yagami, his pants aren't even tight. Yeah, you got it. I'm Takoyuki Yagami. I'm Takoyuki Yagami. Really? This jackass is the one impersonating me? Hey. Look, I'm not stupid. You're Sakakiba from the Neo Kehin gang, aren't you? Oh, he's from the Neo K. Oh! <gasps> the chips guy? What? How did you know that I wasn't Takayuki Yagami? <sighs> what I really want to know is how people mistook you for me. Um, what exactly is going on? 
I'm the real Takayuki Yagami. This guy's a phony. Nope. No, I assure you, that's not Takayuki Yagami. I'm in more shape than that. <laughs> I, uh, just got this glandular thing. Yeah, hit me out of the blue. Hey! What? If you're gonna impersonate me, at least try to hit the right weight class for it. <laughs> I don't see that happening anytime soon. Takayuki Yagami. Hey. Saka Kiba, let's get real. The jig's up, man. Kasai, you were in on this too? What are you trying to pull here? Ah. You fuck shit up for us bad, Yagami. And not just once, twice. Don't mess with me. We were finally getting back on track as the Neo Kahan gang. And then you had to go and ruin it! And even our main man Koga's gone now, too! Hmm. I see. So this is just some petty revenge? That's why you dragged my name through the mud? Tried to ruin my business? Even got some pissed off bogeys to come from my head? You two are some real pieces of work. It's show time! Yeah? Well, it's your fault! I'm starving again! Takayuki Yagami! So you're gonna be my meal ticket from here on! Come on, Sakakiba. The two of us combined. I'm sure we can whoop his ass. Yeah! Fine, bring it. I'll make damn sure I take good care of you this time. <laughs> that's, like, that's what you sound like? <laughs> Ow, fucker! You better apologize to that kid and his three grandfathers. <laughs> I wonder if we're ever going to figure out why there were three of them. Damn you. There's not going to be a judgment three. Well, let's not say that. Maybe there will be. There won't be. There won't be a judgment three. I heard, I heard that they, they, they didn't want to, something about the, the actor, his agency. Yeah. There, I, my coworker was telling me that they didn't even want to put judgment the judgment games on PC because they didn't want people to mod the game and like moderate their uh, their pop star into like weird outfits and stuff like that. So I don't think, sadly, I don't think we're gonna be seeing. Um, I don't think we're gonna be seeing any more Takayuki Yagami. <laughs> But I mean, who knows? I would love to have more Judgment games. I absolutely love this cast. Phew, glad that's talk. over with. So, talk. looks like you were able to clear your name after all. Yeah. Yeah, jeez. That was one hell of a mess. <laughs> oh, but at least you got a taste of what it's like to be a local celebrity, didn't you? Uh, guess so. More than a taste, actually. I think I've had my fill. Working from the shadows as a discreet detective suits me just fine. Uh, sounds like you and I are both happiest with some peace and quiet. Well, here's to the la to that lasting. Yeah. Right. Here's to peace and quiet. I thought I thought Yagami was complaining that he wasn't getting any jobs. Or was that or was he not complaining about? It? I remember they mentioned it. Like, they weren't getting any jobs in Yokohama 99. We're getting tons of jobs over any Jinsho. All right, let's go. Really? What are you doing here, you Genda? You too, Genda Sensei? What? Am I in the way? <laughs> of course not. I didn't know you still did field work. I figured if they could pull a fast one on Saurikun. I'd at least want to look him in the eye. Yeah, her eyes are, are scary. Here? She's always like this. What gives? 
We've been waiting for you, Yagami-san. Mamiya-san is about to enlighten us on the truth behind the groping. Good. Oh, and I heard about Sawa-sensei. I'm so sorry. Our condolences. Looks like she got mixed up in all this when R.K. was chasing after Kawana. But we're still not sure why they chased him. To figure that out, we'll have to retrace Kawana's steps. Exactly. That said, let's start with the harassment charges, Mamiya-san. <sighs> Fine. Let's get this over with. Pout all you want, but keep the answers straight. Got it? The Hara's assault was designed to establish a false alibi for Mikoshiba's murder. So Kawana had you play the victim, and together you pulled one over on the police and the court. Can you confirm if this is all accurate so far, please? Yeah, yeah. The person who groped you on the train wasn't a Harasan himself. It was his stand-in. And my understanding is that he had conspirators to help him fabricate this event? That's right. What was Kawana doing at the time? Was he in Ijinsho or Tokyo? Didn't you hear your lady friend? A Harasan had a stand-in. And that stand-in was our sensei. You mean Kawana posed as a Hara himself? What? So this Ahara was actually Kawana. Huh. The mask? Sensei and Ahara-san have a pretty similar build. Not sure they could have pulled it off otherwise, you know? But some spots don't look right, like his mouth. You sure that's really Kawana-san? That part around his mouth is fake. He said he scanned Ahara-san's face and made it on a 3D printer. Oh, huh. You can He's print like, oh, things impressive. in 3D now? Hmm. Well, it's a machine that takes a model's data from a computer and prints physical objects using materials like resin. So if you were to scan a person's face onto a computer, a 3D printer could accurately recreate it. Hmm. I don't know the details, but that's what Sensei used to become a Harasan. Something like this? See, with a 3D printer, a piece of a face is pretty easy to make. What the hell? <laughs> what the hell? See, his eyes are hidden behind the sunglasses, and the seams on his jaw are obscured by the mask. That's incredible, I must say. With the mouth area so visible, it's too convincing to think he's anybody else. And with the prosecution assuming he's just another sexual predator, they fell for it. This is no time to be impressed. In case you forgot, he had the defense fooled too. Uh -huh. Uh, right. <laughs> Assuming Which Kawana was Ahara's double, there's For still them, some basically. evidence I'm iffy about. I'm of the same opinion. Okay. Which evidence is questionable? Time to pull back the curtain on this case. Any evidence I'm unsure of? I need to press Mamiya on it right now. Okay. What evidence do we want to press? On her so we have the Shinjuku station security footage the eyewitness smartphone footage the trace element inspection report this one's interesting this piece of the puzzle still needs an explanation is that... The police examined the trace evidence on Ahara's hands after he was caught. And from the analysis, the same fibers from Mamiya-san's undergarments were found on Ahara's hands. That's right. If the stand-in was the groper, Ahara-san wouldn't have touched Mamiya-san at all. But the evidence on Ahara-san's hands suggests otherwise. Rather strange, isn't it? I take it there was a trick to this, too? That simple. Before I got in the train, I met with the real Ahara-san at the underground platform. That's when I had him touch the undergarment. After that, all I had to do was go to the bathroom and put them on. That's where the fibers in the trace were from. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty simple. I called that a long time ago. Just as I suspected, Shinahara fabricated the harassment evidence long before it happened. 
What the police found on Ehara-san's hands was exactly what we wanted them to find. And it would serve as hard proof he grabbed me. The cords really ate it up. It was hard not to laugh sometimes, to be honest. You're really starting to open up. That's the spirit. <laughs> I better press mommy on this evidence. Time to pull back the cur- Oh, there's more. Okay. So, I mean, I don't see anything else that we really need. That I- I mean, I feel like I understand everything. So the transit card... Um... Symbol. Kuana was had uh, had the transit card even though it was belonging to ahara they just pass it off this security station footage um that was kuana there that was kuana there this is when they switched i guess we could give get confirmation on when they switched places how about this then what's this a map of the station we made a diagram of Shinjuku Station. The platform's packed with cameras, but take a closer look and you'll notice a small blind spot. We've all been looking into it. So, let's say Ahara murdered Mikoshiba and faked his alibi at the station. If that was the case, then after Ahara had his stand and do the deed, they would have swapped at this blind spot. <laughs> Sound about right. Is I give up what you're looking for? You figured it out. You win. What more do you want? <sighs> I don't know. I guess maybe if she could confess that he he was the one who did it. Any thoughts after seeing this? Stop it. You're going to look away? You aided and abetted by playing the victim, didn't you? I mean, yes. Who put this video up on the internet? Sensei did. He said from the start that once Ehara-san got his guilty verdict, he'd upload it to the internet. So that was all part of the plan. Yeah. Sensei can't forgive the law for how easy it lets out bullies. Ehara-san's the same way. His son's death was brushed aside. The court blamed his suicide on unknown factors. And that's what led them to his whole plan. The real victim is some bully who never got what he deserved, and the killer gets off in court by being convicted of battery. How would the public respond after finding out they'd gamed the law like that? So Kawana and Ahara's real plan was to make a mockery out of the justice system. <sighs> Seems to be going well for them. The courts are beside themselves for dragging the police into this. I guess Ahara really was desperate. He was never concerned about his own punishment. He tarnished his own name to humiliate the law. Yeah, cop or not, Ahara is a broken man. Nobody took responsibility for his son's death. The courts all but ignored his case. No wonder he went along with Kawana. I can't even imagine. Yeah. Sensei and Ehara son are the perfect pair with nothing to lose. The only ones who do are the ones forced to comply. Us. Speaking of which, are we done here yet? Uh, apparently not. Alright, let's just go down the list. The security station footage? What do you make of this? I mean, what's there to doubt? Uh, you tell me? The one running on the platform was an Ahara son. It was Sensei pretending to be him, right? Yep. Meaning? There is no more meaning. That's all there is to it. Ahara son used a stand in to fake his alibi. The stand in turned out to be none other than Jin Kuana, which Mamiya san just finished explaining in detail. Yep. Good to know we have all our ducks in a row. Okay, so there's something specific that they want me to point out. But I feel like everything's been explained. Let's see. Um, she already explained that those people that grabbed him are were um, in on it. The 
transit card, we know. Chose him at the station at 745. What do they want me to point out? I don't know. Train car security footage. That's Juana. Like the transit card? I don't know. How about this then? Can I just leave? And this is? Before the incident, Ahari used this card to go through the ticket gate at Ikabukuro, the time of which was recorded. Right, and it was on October 7th at 7.43 a.m. Thanks, Hoshino-kun. Happy to help, Yagami-san. You're at a great help. At the earliest, help. Mikoshiba's time of death would have been 7.30 a.m. If Ahara killed Mikoshiba in a gene show, he would have only had 13 minutes to get to Ikibukuro. And frankly, that's impossible. <laughs> that's what's dumping you? Huh? Sensei borrowed the card from Ahara's son beforehand and passed through the gate. Afterward, he slipped it back to Ehara-san when they switched places. That way, Ehara-san ended up having the time-stamped card on him. Makes sense now. So even the entry time through the ticket gate was used as part of the alibi? It all seems so obvious now that I hear it. Nobody it is obvious. that groping was being used as an alibi for murder. Yeah. And on top of all that, no one knew Mikoshiba had been killed during the trial. Really pulled it off. Anything else? No. Yagami-san, you sure that's enough? Yeah, I think we've got plenty. Okay, that's what Bottom they wanted. Line, groping was a fabrication. At the very least, I knew that we know that five the prosecution's ago. evidence can all be refuted. The courts were being intentionally misled. I'm considering filing an appeal. Are you saying you want a retrial? I am. We'll reveal Ahara and Kawana's plot and overturn the verdict they issued. Hmm. That might be harder than it sounds. Why do you say that, Genda-sensei? Well, the previous trial resulted in Ahara being found guilty, right? As the client, if he doesn't want an appeal, there's no way you're getting one. Doesn't matter what any lawyer tries to do. If Ahara refuses oh. to appeal, and that's that. Well, that makes sense. And we'll talk to him tomorrow. First, we need to see how he reacts to everything we've got on him. Sounds good. Then let's meet at the detention center tomorrow. Will do. So, we done for the night? Sure are. Great job, everyone. Go get some rest. Yo. Yagami, you sure it was cool to let that mommy a chick just go home? Yeah, why? I mean, she helped Kuwana kill all those people. Aren't you gonna turn her in or something? I would, but there's nothing we can do. Pfft, nothing we can do? Frankly, we don't have any proof of the murder she was talking about. What, so this is all for nothing? Nothing directly pointing to mommy anyway. Aside from Mikoshiba, no other bodies turned up. Which means all we can do is take her home, right? Sugira is making sure she gets back safe. <sighs> Fine, forget it. Why are you still here? Everyone else went home already. To hang out with you. Come on, man, why the cold shoulder? Am I really that annoying? You wouldn't be the guy I'd call to hang out with. So if you're done, then go. Come on. Wow, straight for the jugular, huh? Be my friend. But if it's help you need, I'll be there. I've had nothing but time lately. But only if you bow your head and ask nice. Then I'll consider it. <laughs> I know for a fact you'd help me out regardless. So why waste a good bow? <laughs> Thanks for the drink. <laughs> These two. Dude, come on. That was your cue to bow and ask nice. <laughs> Not a chance. Not a chance. Gonna go with Saudi san to interview Ahara tomorrow. Time to call it a day. All right, I want to do that really quick. I know we don't have much time left tonight, but let's do one more thingy. One more thingy, my bobber.
there gonna be anybody in here? Better not be. Time for Sari-san and me to interview Ahara. Better take a cab to the Tokyo Detention Center. All right. Have a good night, Mike. Sleep well. Thanks for hanging out. See you tomorrow. We'll be progressing more of the main story. Cab, mini cab. Can we grab some food? I don't think we're gonna be doing any fight or anything. Starving. Pretty tasty. Thanks. Arigatou Yo, turn it up. Okay, Tokyo Detention Center. So, you're recommending an appeal. I have that right? Did some new evidence come to light? You Imami have told us some things. Like how you faked your alibi for Mikoshiba's murder. You wanted the sexual battery conviction, right? Well... Your goal was to avenge your son and humiliate the law on a grand scale. I have no idea what you're talking about. Ahara-san, we have a much better grasp of the situation than you think. And what exactly have you grasped? Like Yagami-san just said, you're innocent. As far as the harassment goes. As your lawyer, I'll file for an appeal. And we'll make sure the world knows it. Thanks, but no. I'm scum of the earth. A pervert. The prosecution and the judge made that very clear in the verdict. On the day of the crime, October 7th, at around 6.30 a.m., you were in Ijincho, not Tokyo. <laughs> Baloney. I was relaxing at home. Except that you weren't. Oh? You wanted to give the man who pushed your son to suicide the beating of a lifetime. And you'd miss out on that opportunity if you were at home, which is why you were in Ijincho instead. Isn't that right? You and Kawana's former student staked out Mikoshiba's house until he left. Then you dragged your prey into a car and brought him to an abandoned building in Ijincho, which would later become a murder scene. Every bone on Mikoshiba's fingers was broken. Mm. Remembering how he pushed Toshiro-kun to his death, it's no wonder you'd go that far. You tortured Mikoshiba without a shred of remorse. You inflicted no small amount of pain and terror. There's no way you weren't there, Ugh. and I'd put my money on that. And then... You need the whole play-by-play, -play, even though you already know it? Oh, not at all. I'm just fascinated by this outrageous little story. I'll use a piece of evidence to show what he did next, after beating up Mikoshiba. Okay... The evidence is he switched places with Juana at the blind spot. As for what you did next after beating Mikoshiba. <sighs> okay, and what exactly is the point of showing this to me? Uh, hang on. That wasn't what I meant to pull out. <laughs> Was it, though? Pull yourself together and press on. After beating up Mikoshiba, oh, he killed him. Sorry, I was getting too ahead. 
As for what you did next after beating Mikoshiba. <laughs> it's quite a home video. Without leaving anything on Mikoshiba's body that could be traced back to you, you slid his throat. Estimated time of death was around 7.30 a.m. on October 7th. You tossed the bloody coat and made your way to Ikebukuro Station, where Yui Mamiya was waiting. Are you sure? I was at Ikebukuro by 7.30 a.m. Would have been impossible for me to kill Mikoshiba and Ijincho. The person in the security camera footage in Ikebukuro was a double who imitated your likeness. The identity of whom belonged to Jin Kuwana, the handyman in Ijincho. Or maybe you know him by a different name. Former high school teacher Yu Kitakata. So which name did he give you? I don't know who you're talking about. With Kawana in view of the security camera, you met up with Yui Mamiya at Ikebukuro first. That's where you touched the undergarments she had prepared. The police would later discover the trace evidence on your hands and pin the groping on you. Then you made your way to Shinjuku Station. After that, Mamiya and Kuwana acted out the groping as they arrived at Shinjuku Station. Kuwana jumped out of the train and Mamiya chased after him. And then, in the smallest of blind spots in a station absolutely packed with cameras, you were waiting for Kuwana, who looked just like you. With the two of you matching, you were able to swap places in that huge crowd without anyone noticing. Kawana handed you the transit card used to pass the ticket gate. Just one piece of hard evidence that places you in Ikebukuro at 7.43 a.m. And right after the swap, Mamiya started calling for help. After that, well, we've all seen how the news reported it. You were caught in a public place with plenty of witnesses. An active duty police officer arrested for sexual battery the public outcry was very clear. As a result, despite it being your first offense, you were actually tried and convicted. The consensus is that it was a fitting punishment for someone so heinous. Even as your lawyer, I felt the same. Have some confidence in yourself, Shirosaki sensei The prosecution, the judge, and a lawyer like you all laid out the evidence in court and found me guilty. I'm in no position to doubt you, and I've long accepted the ruling that Toshiro was never bullied. Ha! Huh, you're right. There's nothing I can do but abide by the rule of law. Right? That's all I can do, right? I know what you're trying to say. You carried out the justice that the courts wouldn't, right? Everything my son went through was passed off like it never even happened. School, the teachers, and yes, the court. They all dismissed the reason he died. That's when Kawana came in the picture, telling you Toshiro kun had been bullied. But was it Kawana's words that suddenly made you want to kill Mikoshiba? Because all of his fingers were broken while he was still alive. Was that really all just your pent up rage? What do you have to say, Harasan? There shouldn't have been any evidence of Mikoshiba's bullying. Who told Ehara the truth? Did your son tell you he was bullied? Did Sawa Sensei tell you what happened? Did Kuwana tell you about the bullying? Did you discover it online? Kuwana. Kuwana's the one who wanted to put this all in motion. Because he's on this crazy, like, He's uh, some vigilante hero who's kill murdering bullies across the country. Did Kawana really tell you? You found enough motive to murder Mikoshiba on hearsay? <sighs> no. No? That doesn't sound right at all. Okay. Then... Did Sawa Sensei tell him? Was Sawa Sensei the one who told you the truth? She was the only person Toshiro kun confided in. You had to have heard it from her, 
right? Nearly hit the nail on the head, as they say. Nearly? After my trial, she confessed she knew about the bullying. But only to her old teacher over the phone. She had no idea she was being recorded. What? Kuanasan let me listen to that recording where I learned Sawa Sensei had been muzzled by both the homeroom teacher and the lawyer. That was the proof of Toshiro's bullying I'd wanted all throughout the trial. After hearing Sawa Sensei's words, I finally understood. They pushed my boy over the edge. Was there no other evidence of the bullying? Like a diary of Toshiro-kun's or something of the sort? Nothing. Toshio never talked to me or my wife about the bullying. And that was probably all my fault. He was bullied in middle school, too. Kids would throw his pencil case around or hide his books. When I heard about it, I chewed him out. They walk all over you because you're weak. Grow spine, I told him. Ooh. I take it that was the wrong approach. Yeah. <sighs> I can't imagine how much courage it took for him to come forward about his suffering. I'm sure he felt ashamed about it. And I should have listened when he pleaded for help. I should have told him I was proud of his bravery. But instead, I pushed him away. And in the end, Toshiro tried to make sure he never showed weakness to us again. Ouch. No matter how much pain he was in. He went to a private school out in Yokohama because he hated living with me. But in the end, he still suffered. And that's why you didn't hesitate to unleash hell on Mikoshiba. If you say so. You still won't admit to murdering Mikoshiba. Must be killing him not to. So the first time Kawana showed up was when he let you listen to the phone call with Sawa-sensei, right? Yes. He approached me and asked me if I still wanted justice for my son. I was in uniform when he came to me too. Very bold, but it paid off. I owe him a debt of gratitude. He reassured me he had already taken care of multiple individuals like Goshiba, and that he'd urged other families to avenge the children they lost to bully. He'd tell them that simply being branded a bully wasn't enough. He promised to deliver real justice. If justice can be served at one's own discretion, laws would cease to serve their function. If the law isn't fair to everyone, no one will obey it. The law is only able to help the powerless because it can't be swayed by money, force, or anything else. Then tell me, what's the solution when the law fails to punish someone who laughs in its face? To overlook those the law won't judge to abandon those the law couldn't protect. To render justice with confidence, you require sufficient evidence. Some of the victims' families refused Kuana's offer of revenge, telling him it would be unforgivable. But even after rejecting his offer, not a one reported Kuana-san to the police. Do you understand what that implies? Whether you follow through with revenge or not, Kuanasan presents a solution that resonates with people. Being that the law is unfair and imperfect. Am I wrong about that? No, you're not. But we're fighting to make it as fair as we can. Laws have to change until they are perfect. They don't change fast enough. Toshiro's death was murder by another name. Yet, Hiromi Kushiba walked free. He even got to enroll in a teaching program as a student teacher. Yeah, that's... Someone like him? It's insane! 
Mm -hmm. I'd die of old age before the law was ever written to be fair enough. For Toshiro's sake, I can't turn a blind eye to a world where the Mikoshibas can live without consequence. Tell me, what alternative was there to getting blood on my hands? I didn't have any other choice. Yagami-san, did he just... This is the first time you've admitted to killing Mikoshima. You really did your research. Unlike those useless cops. Wana-san's plan was impressive. Almost airtight. I didn't expect it to be unraveled so quickly. I just got lucky. There was some dirt on Yui Mamiya that Kuwana could have used against her. If we hadn't found it, there's no way we would have gotten her to talk. What are you talking about? <laughs> Sorry, but I'm under no obligation to tell you. Ahara-san, you'll be sent to prison as a sex offender as it stands. Of course. Just as I planned. The charges will be confirmed, and I'll be convicted. As for the police and the prosecution, they wouldn't be able to admit they made a mistake. I could scream, I killed Mikoshiba at the top of my lungs. It wouldn't matter. Are you saying you intend to admit to the murder after you're released? Everyone's seen the video of me killing Mikoshiba by now. It's obviously authentic, but the prosecution and the police are saying it's fake. They need it to be fake. Even if I do confess, they'll sweep it under the rug. Further proving that it's a broken system. No, that's not beneath them. But I take it how they react doesn't really matter to you. All you want is to humiliate the law, don't you? The same system that determined Toshiro Kun's incident didn't happen. It seems you're starting to understand, Yanami-san. Ahara's achieved most of what he wanted to do, but I can't overlook what he's already done. The prosecution wanted to charge me for Mikoshiba's murder. Then they'd have to retract the battery verdict. And that would mean admitting to a massive blunder by the court at the hands of a criminal. It would be chaos. Despite knowing who murdered Mikoshiba, no one would know what to make of the case. Wouldn't that just be wonderful? I hear you. And I even get why you'd feel pretty proud of accomplishing that. Do you? But in this case, the guys pretty much grabbed the tiger by the tail. What tiger's tail? Someone's issuing orders to the thugs in Kamurocho from behind the scenes. He's the tiger in this case. And they've been closing in on your partner, Kawana. And Sawa-sensei got in their path. I'm sure you get the newspaper in here, right? You know, don't you? Sawa sensei was killed after the thugs broke into her home. All because she got involved with Kuwana. Where she was killed. This is the first I'm hearing of the reason why. And by thugs, you mean RK? Yeah, but we don't know why they're going after Kuwana. Any ideas? No way I'd know. You think it could be because she got mixed up in your deadly little game? Excuse me. That's what getting away with murder really looks like. The more you perpetuate the lie, the greater the rift you create. And then, the unthinkable happens. Kawana killed others besides Mikoshiba. You said so yourself. That's what brought the angry tiger into play. And if Sawa-sensei ended up paying for that instead, then how can you begin to believe your vengeance is fair? Because she gave false testimony. She lied in court to say Toshiro was never bullied. She couldn't name Mikoshiba, who was a minor at the time, without evidence. What's more, she was haunted by her testimony, always second-guessing if she did the right thing. But now she's been killed. Somehow that's acceptable to you? I'm gonna clear up what happened to Sawa-sensei, just like you did for Toshiroku. How? By going public with everything you and Kawana did. The first step is to appeal the sexual battery and undo this whole lie. You never groped Yui Mamiya. That's one crime you're innocent of, Ehara-san. 
The court's verdict was incorrect. So please give us the chance to appeal. We can prove your innocence. What on earth would I get out of that? Yeah, I'm not seeing why he you would get agree to, humiliate to it. The court again. Besides, what are you going to do for the next half a year in a cell? Fine. Do what you want. But just know this. But then he'll be yes. charged for murder. I have no intention of admitting to killing Mikoshiba in court. Is your appeal still worth a damn? We won't know until we try. Let's go, sorry son. We have client approval to proceed with the appeal. I guess it's not as easy as fast. that. Yes, agreed. Yagamisa. Sawa Sensei's death isn't on me. Even if I have grabbed the tiger by the tail, that doesn't mean I killed her. By that logic, you may as well admit that Miko Shiba didn't kill Toshiro Kun. Oh. You can't have it both ways. Listen to me. Everything about you, about Kuwana, about why Sawa Sensei had to die, we're gonna expose all of it. That's the only thing left we can do for her. I'd be a little afraid if I were him. I'm going to fill Genda Sensei in on what happened. Why don't you head over to the office? Sure thing. Uh, uh, Greg can definitely sound scary when he wants to. Yeah, he does an excellent job. Let's go talk to let's go inside. So then, Ihara admitted to killing Mikashiba, did he? Off the record, yeah. He also admitted Kawana approached him to offer revenge. That sounds like you were productive. It's enough for us to move forward with the appeal, I'd say. How does that sound, Genda-sensei? Uh, Genda-sensei? The sexual battery and Mikashiba's murder are the very same case. To clear Ihara of harassment, You'll need to prove he murdered Mikoshiba. But you don't have evidence he did, do you? Ehara-san was captured on video committing the murder. And the prosecution claims it's a fake, of unknown origins. The police are saying the same. They're only saying that to cover their asses. In reality, the sexual battery evidence against Ehara-san is what was really fake. At the very least, we can claim Yui Mamiya and the others aided in fabricating that. Alibi or not. You really think the courts will grant you an appeal for just that? Are you saying that's not possible? I wouldn't go that far. But Ehara won't admit to murdering Mikashiba in court. Kind of significant, don't you think? So what chance do you have even if you do appeal? Without any decisive new evidence, you'll just end up splitting hairs over the original verdict. And what good'll it do other than damage your own reputation, Sarukun? So Genda Sensei is worried about Sarisan's career. I'm sure that's the case, although to be honest with you, I feel like I've been deeply underestimated. What? Sarisan. Honey? Are you actually mad? Yes. As a matter of fact, I am. Oh you have every the right tigress. to tigress. Listen, Sensei. Ehara and Kawana devised this plan knowing full well they could manipulate the justice system. Have we not fallen right into their trap? If we take pity on the prosecution now, we play right into their hand. True. So how can we worry about reputation when our duty as lawyers is to face the law? I understand where you're coming from, and you're right to think it, but... And another thing. While acting as Ahara's defense in the first trial, I never truly believed the claim. I didn't trust the person I was defending, and I felt sick to my stomach even being in the courtroom. Sorry, son. Ahara likely saw right through that. He probably took great delight in our myopic dedication to the law. And I won't stand for that. I'm gonna show him exactly what I can do. Hmm, what about you, Yagami? I wanna hear your thoughts. He's not saying it, but he disagrees with Sari-san. How should I move this forward? 
Uh, we should listen to Saori-san. Genda-sensei has a point. I defer to Hoshino-kun. Uh, should we just... <laughs> should we just throw this on Hoshino? <laughs> I kind of want to see what he'll say. Uh, I'll defer to Hoshino-kun on this one. Huh? Wait, why are you putting me on the spot? Because I didn't feel like being on the spot. I mean, I don't work here anymore, so... It, don't you play that card now? Especially not with so much on the line. <laughs> not gonna let me get away That's with right. it? Genda Sensei's asking your opinion for a reason. Okay. So what's it gonna be? Your opinion counts, Yagami. What the hell? Why am I the one getting grilled here? Well, I guess I'll just be straightforward then. Back the poor girl up. Yeah, we gotta move forward, right? Because... Look, guys, I'm really tired, so... Saori-san wants to appeal, and Genda says don't appeal? Well, if we don't appeal, then we just drop the whole thing, right? So, I mean, yeah, we gotta do it. Plus, I gotta take her side. She's my girl. We should listen to Saori-san. I understand why Ahara and Kawana did what they did. I can't condone it. I see. So you feel it too, huh? Yes. Although my motivation may not be as righteous as Sarisan's. Hmm. What do you mean? Mikoshiba's murder, the fake groping alibi. The one behind it all was Kawana, and he's in hiding. We need to shine enough light on him that the public can see what he is. And the perfect place to do it is during Ahara's appeal hearing. So it's not Ahara you're after, but Kawana. If we pursue Ahara's case, Kawana-san's actions will naturally come to light. And if we draw out Kawana, then RK and the ones backing them will make their move. Soma from RK said Sawa sensei knew too much, which means whoever's behind them has a secret that needs to stay buried, even if it means murder. And I need to figure that secret out. I owe Sawa sensei that closure. The only thing we can do for her now is make sure the ones pulling the strings pay for it. Well said. I guess going back wasn't ever really an option. Genda Sensei. Looks like I got complacent from all the peace and quiet. Leave it to me to underestimate the younger generation. I apologize. I shouldn't have been so impertinent. Mm, that should be my line, Saurikun. I suppose I have to make up my mind after all that, don't I? Get out there and do what needs to be done. And heaven help anyone in your way. Yeah. Right. Yep. You heard him. Tsukumo's calling. Hope everything's okay. Yagamishi! Hello? Yagamishi, are you still in Kamurocho? Yeah, why? What's up? I'm afraid RK seems to be amassing any Jincho. It's very bizarre. Are they now? Yeah, I can't shake the feeling that the officers like Soma and Akutsu are still in town. You think so? If I was Soma, I'd have left the Jinjo by now. He's a person of interest in Sawa Sensei's murder, too. I see. That does make sense. Things are settling into place here, though. I'm heading back to Jinjo with Sugiura. We got a lot to go over with you when I get back. <laughs> Wonder what it could be. Okay, see you soon then. <laughs> ah, let's talk to the peeps. Yeah, let's go. I'm going to start filing the appeal. Yagami-san, the work you've done is what made that possible. You've been invaluable. Oh, Husbando's calling me. I gotta end the stream here. Saori-san's going above and beyond while I'm just sitting around. I need to step it up too. Tani may be gone, but Saori-kun's really filled in the gap. And Hoshino-kun, well... <laughs> he'll figure it out someday. Yeah, that's the first time they brought up Shintani in this whole game, isn't it? Okay, I gotta go. I just... I'm trying to figure out what is... What secret is somebody trying to hide about all of this? So, if we... 
continue investigating. If we prove that Ahara didn't do the groping, it has got to have something to do with Kuwana. I just wonder if there's some kind of secret, secret about the whole, um, uh, what's the, the, uh, what's his name? The kid that jumped and got put into a coma. Maybe it wasn't a suicide attempt at all. Maybe somebody pushed him and they're trying to keep that a secret. Like if we dig too deep, we'll find out the truth about that. Or maybe he's not even in a coma. Like maybe it's, it's all a lie and they, I mean, I, I don't know why they would want to like give him like a new identity and like kill him off. Like, you know, but, uh, I don't know. I just, there's something, somebody, somebody hired RK, but they're going after us and they're going after Kuwana, but it doesn't seem like there's something else Kuwana knows that we don't know about that. I don't know. Ah, ah. Coma guy is behind it all. I think it has something to do with that incident, but. I don't know. Anyways, I have to go. Sorry, I went over time and now I have to rush off. But we'll be back tomorrow and then we will continue the main story, okay? So I'm excited. I'll see you guys then. Have a good night and bye-bye.